Hey, folks. You know, a self-defense event happens in seconds. And in the time it takes to listen to this commercial, your life could change forever. I pray you're never forced to shoot in a self-defense situation. But if you must, then you must be ready. And that's why USCCA exists. Because every responsibly armed American should have the training and education to navigate a self-defense situation. And should you ever need it, the 24-7 critical response team is right there for you. To discover more about the USCCA, visit uscca.com slash G-O-R. Act now because the life you save could be your own. Remember, uscca.com slash G-O-R. Do you not look stunning or what? I know, right? Look at you and your great new hat. Where's gun yours? Owner. Throw your hat on, I Super take, Dave. I got to take mine. I think. <laughs> I take the sticker off? No, I think you're supposed to leave it on. Leave it on. That People might think right, you maybe. stole it, though. Well, there is that too. Merry I'm, Christmas, I'm my good friend. Till, I'm good till nine hundred dollars, <laughs> and then you can't touch me. Merry Christmas, it's, Merry Christmas it's to our, you. Too. Our Christmas episode, yes, everybody, it is live. We did not pre-record this. Me and Dave, and the crew. Ho, 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 ho. Merry Christmas. <laughs> yeah, that looks good, man. I know. Thank you. Well, you know, and how can people get these? Well, that's a great question. Um, super easy. Now we have something to give away. Yep. On Sam. Yeah. On Sam. <laughs> Not that we ever have to. No. Hey, I'm, I'm getting Sam to call in early today. By cool. Way. Yeah. He's I was hoping you would. We're going to just talk to him until it's time ready. Hey, can you turn me up just a skosh? I probably could if I knew which cable. It so if to. you want hats and, uh, shirts that say gun owners radio on it, uh, uh, all you got to do is go to shop dot gun owners, radio.com shop dot gunownersradio.com and you got t-shirts too t-shirts and hats I think, I think there's like a couple of there's there's some other stuff there. yeah we'll have to look see what swag that we may have available but just go to the website there's a link to the website you can buy cool you can buy merch merch <laughs> that's important gotta, i think it looks good man i think uh i did too i mean it's, it's a good a, job it's a good size hat i mean it's yeah. not too big it's not too small yep yeah i see you bend your bill just like i did yeah uh, a little i always want to bend it up like that you know like yeah. these guys all the way there, but i can't do no, it's called Bubba Bill. Is that? Yeah. I you just, got a Bubba Bill. I can't do the Bubba Bill. <laughs> I just can't do it. I'm sorry. It's just not going to work out. So it makes uh, me want to speak in a Southern accent. It sure does. Talk about it's, it's a Listen, it's a good ball club. I have a lot yep. of faith in the ball yep. club. Yep. We're going to take it all the way to the. All, right. the, all the way to the series. We're going all the way to the series this year. Hey, how was that overly packed Christmas party? I, I thought it was great. <laughs> It was awesome, it? dude. I yeah. thought it was a prom. I said, we're back at the gun prom. <laughs> I thought it was great. Valley High did an awesome job. Yeah. It yeah. was a great night. Yep. Got to see a lot of folks. And uh, What do you think the head count was? Oh, my God. It, it had to be a couple hundred easy. I had, I wish everybody's settled on about, just about 200 people, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, out of the middle, I mean, it's just just really a good turnout really it was good, good. it was a lot of fun uh, you know you know how i knew it was going well is uh well first off you know we don't do any rsvps which is fine i don't right. care about that yeah, really care about um that. just you know show up and hope for the best um <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> some years that works some years that this you don't year show works. up it's more for me yeah so um and you know doors open at 5 30 and like quarter after five yeah, place. We're, we're already yeah, we're already we're place already packed. We're already we, we're already aligned to buy raffle tickets. Yeah, I'm like, oh my god, we haven't even opened the doors yet. That that that's what I say. Hey, how my uh, tequila bottle do? It went it went high on the list. Did it really? It did. Okay, so this is interesting. <laughs> so we had a Tavor. That's that's a three thousand dollar rifle. Oh, I yeah, three hundred blackout, three three thousand dollar. I don't know. Somebody out there is probably no, it's not. It's twenty seven fifty. Yeah. Whatever. It's like it's cl close enough to three thousand. You didn't win it, so be quiet. And then we had, uh, and then next would have been the um, I would uh, probably the FMK. It's a nine millimeter. Okay. And then next would have been a Taurus G three, also a nine millimeter. Wow. And then next was that bottle of bourbon. The with, one I with, brought? No, not the one you brought. You brought tequila. Yeah, but then I brought a bottle of bourbon too. No, well, not that one. The Russell. Not that one. Okay. There was a, there was actually a San Diego County Gun Owners branded bottle of bourbon. No kidding. Which is cool. So did you win it? No, I didn't win anything. So that's the order it should have gone in. It should have gone 300 Blackout, FMK, oh, oh, I say. Taurus, Bourbon. Okay. <clears throat> it didn't go in that order at all. How did it go? It went, uh, it went FMK, and the, 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 so the first person who went up there, he, he decided, he was like, I want a pistol. 
okay. You so know, you mean ahead. they could pick what they want? Yeah, sure. So he won. He went. He went. It was FMK, and I'm. I'm. In, there's a reason I'm going this direction. And then the uh, then the uh, the 300 blackout, the the Tavor. Okay. And then um, and then was uh, your your bottle of tequila. Because the yeah, because the next winner was like you know I don't really need another gun. I'm not really a bourbon person, but she liked the, uh, the tequila, the tequila, and with it was the in sh- the shape of with, a gun with the shooters on the or <laughs> yeah. shot glasses on the top. Yeah, so so yours was like it was like the third or fourth or whatever thing to go. That is so funny, <laughs> so, and it was such a last minute thing, you know, because I've had it. You know, I haven't had it that long. I think I got it on my. Oh, hope, hope he's not listening. But Barb, no, it's Barb. I hope she is listening. She, let's go <laughs> no, ahead. No, I'm so, talking. About, the person that gave oh, it to oh. me as a gift. <laughs> I, you I, re-gifted it? I re-gifted it. Because I'm thinking to myself, what better place to have a unique giveaway yeah. that's shaped like a gun at a gun event? Right. So, yeah. uh, and no one would be more deserving than you. So, And every once in a while, you know, people in, in San Diego tend to like tequila. We we have a little bit of tequila around yeah. us. Yeah. So tell Destroy Ruth, so. the only thing I ask is a shot. Barb. Or Barb, all I need is a shot. I will. I'm having. Uh, I oh, will. So we'll you're going to go week. try it out. Yeah, she, <laughs> I'm going to go have a tequila with her this week. Right, so yeah, I can't perfect. take you anywhere. That's all there's to. Yeah. Here's the other. The other way I knew that that people were having fun. Yeah. Is I went to like go give a little, you know, say a few words, and nobody, and nobody, was, <laughs> nobody was listening. <laughs> I finally, Desi's like, I was talking to Desi. Desi's the program manager yeah. for Not Me. She does a fantastic job. Yeah. She goes, Hey. I'm going to say a few words about now. Yes, of course. Yeah. So here, let me, let me start out and then I'll you know pass it over to you. And I start talking and, uh, you know, said a few words and I turned to Desi and I said, nobody cares. <laughs> I said, she goes, yeah, I'm not going to say a few yeah, words. Let's just go to the website. Let's just pull some winners and that's that. And, uh, just make but, it a Christmas party and be done with it. Which seems to be the best. We always, I got to tell you, we try to balance it. We try to, you know, uh, we you try, try to, so hard. We, yeah, we do. We try so hard. And, but you know what? They all, it, they, you, None of them, none of them have come out bad. Well, thank you. I mean, serious. Have yeah. you, I mean, we've had some technical glitches. Let's be up straightforward yeah. and honest. Yeah. But no one's ever said this is the worst party I've ever been to. And the reason you know that is every year it grows. Yeah. Well, se- I, well, seven, seven and a half years ago or whatever when we started San Diego County Gun Week. Can you believe that? I didn't know I was going to get this good at, at event planning. <laughs> Two minutes. Yeah, you probably never thought you'd ever have to do event planning. But honestly, that was always a big part of the. Uh, that was always a big part of the deal. Um, I remember your first one. You were a disaster. Which one? The very first gun prom we had. Uh, you, it, on the on the your on the back uh, went out. Oh, that was uh, that was actually the second one at the yeah, hotel. Bell. Yeah. yeah, my back went out. You were a mess. I thought it took me three hours to drive home. What the hell? Dave, <laughs> I know you should have stayed at the hotel. Dell. We were. It was like thirty minutes before we opened the doors. Yep. And, and, and I went, went, oh, my God. It what am I going to do? It can't be. The, what am I going to do? The sweat running down your face was because you were – I felt so bad for you. Well, that, that's just normal. The sweat. Yeah. <laughs> that just happens. What are we gonna, yeah, I can't help anyway, myself. Anyway, so, so this is the Christmas show. There, yeah, one really is, no, no, there's no guests. Nope. nope. Except <laughs> Sam. Sam's going to come on at 5. He's going to be a co-host. It's just me and Super Dave talking about stuff. Yeah. Talking about stuff. And we'll try to stay on the straight and narrow as much as we possibly can. No guarantees there. Try not to get too political. but uh, <laughs> No guarantees there. No either. guarantees there as well. So, yeah, let's go ahead and take a well, quick break. And Merry Christmas to everybody. Oh, if you're absolutely. listening right now, Merry, very Merry Christmas to you. I hope yeah. you got everything you wanted, right. including your Red Rider. And I hope you're with the folks you love because we the girl that was just on her husband's in the hospital and he's having a real tough time sorry to hear that so and most importantly don't shoot your eye if you have legal matters that involve firearms and you need to call california firearm lawyer john dillon especially if you have questions about red flag laws gun registration gun transportation or maybe you just need to know that your guns are california compliant call our trusted firearms attorney john dillon john dillon specializes in California gun laws, call 760-642-7150, or you can visit his website at dillonlawgp.com. Hey, this red, this red hat has a big bit of a MAGA feel to it, doesn't I it? I picked the red <laughs> and blue. <laughs> I like it. I, I do, too. And I like the subtle, I like the font of the gun owner's radio. Yeah, yeah. And then I, the, uh, did you see the, uh, the uh, logos on the back? Yeah, it's got, logo uh, on the back. got the uh, your, your logo. Yeah. 
See? No, uh, the gun owner logo. Yeah, the gun owner. That's what I said. Your logo. No, 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 no. The it should be gun owner's radio logo, right? Oh, I did gun owner's radio. Oh, yeah, I got. Which take they my, look very similar. I got to take my cans off. Coincidentally. Oh no! Oh it's, no it, no. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's, yeah. yeah it's got, <laughs> we don't know. We don't even know our own. Logo. We we missed that meeting. <laughs> yes, we did. We weren't even invited. <laughs> so hey. I thought that was really creative, by the way. The uh, turning R, you know, the gun owner, the San oh, Diego gun owners yeah. logo into the, you know, with the radio. I thought so, too. You I think that was. That idea? Was that Rich? That was, uh, yeah, it was committee. Oh, it was <laughs> a, our committee, a subcommittee oh. came up with that. Which we don't know who that, those people are. <laughs> uh, by the way, uh, uh, Alicia was going to be here today, but yep. she decided. No, nope, she's doing, she's okay, doing. Yeah. Uh, Did you hear her post? What? I just got, I fed him yesterday. I know. <laughs> I mean. I got a every feed. day. I got a feed. Oh my every kid. single day. That's kind of oh my god. Okay, I guess I can't go out and that's and a, Brittany. She called in uh, what at at her family get together. Yeah, she said that oh so and so is going to be what ten minutes late. I'll be right back. She runs outside. She called in. <laughs> it was cute, but uh, well, yeah. we're here. Yeah, well, you know, and didn't we get some good news through Supreme Court? Or is well, that down the road? Well, it's it's conversation wise. Yeah, there's stuff coming. There's definitely a lot of stuff coming. But uh, but but the, oh, I know what it was. Newsom got his hand slapped and said he couldn't treat uh, the gun situation like he would. Um, what was it? Damn, I can't believe I don't know. I should have wrote it down, or he's, he's got some documentation on it. But he was trying to compare a law that had passed. Yeah. That. Was it just a code? I, I, I think what you're talking about is what happened was in Texas, they had this, uh, it was an, an abortion law. That's it. Yeah. That's it. And, and tried to bring it over and throw the gun into it. So he was against the law or, or you know, he didn't like the, the abortion law. Right. Um, so what he did is he, he, what he's claiming to have done is that he, he copied the law, but rather than abortion, applied it to guns. Correct. I would... I would argue, and I think most legal professionals, you know, and and students of of, of the law, law would argue that it really isn't a copy of this abortion law. That it's very different. Um, specifically, my understanding of the law in, in in Texas. I'm not an expert on the law in Texas. No, neither am I. But my understanding is that one of the things that you could do is you could actually sue an abortion clinic for you know, breaking law. Mm -hmm. So if mm -hmm. they did perform some kind of abortion and you found out you could sue them. Well, yeah, I don't, I, I don't really know what the standing would be. Maybe if like, uh, somehow it had, somehow it would have had to have affected you. Right. Somehow. But again, I'm not a, I'm not an expert there. So what, uh, what he tried to do here in, in California is not only make it so that you could sue the manufacturer of a firearm, mm -hmm. but also if you did sue, the, the state of California to, you know, to get rid of some of these horrible laws and you lost that the state could actually come after you right. to re re regain, uh, you know, any legal, legal fees. fees. Now I don't, that's not neither of those. You're not mapping. That's not the same. It's, it's apples and oranges. Right. Um, well, he just tried, well, yeah, which he yeah. does a lot. That right. administration does a lot of it. Well, he he was you know it was kind of for him it was two birds with one stone. Mm -hmm. One, he's anti gun. He's vehemently anti gun. Mm -hmm. um, and two, uh, he, he's trying to get rid of this abortion law. So there's kind of two birds with right. one stone. But the the left scene, I mean, look at, I mean, they they're doing everything humanly possible, you know, at, 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 in this White House. Well, we know, you know, just excusing all of these uh, school loans is not yeah. legal, but you know, we're gonna do it anyway. And it just seems that mindset, because really, once you've done it, like if you steal a cookie and no one smacks your hand, well, get another one. Well, I, and that's where I see this whole, you know, I hate to say it, but the Democratic Party, they just seem like they can get away with it because no, there's no one's going to do anything. I, I've, I've said for a while, if, if you look at, at the, the two sides, you know, and there's more than two sides, but we're, if you're just, just stereotyping broad, broad, broad strokes. Mm-hmm. Um, the left of center tends to be a lot more comfortable with the idea of the ends justifies the means, mm. meaning we don't care what we got to do to get it done. 
We're just going to get it. We just want to get it done. Like, th- what we're doing is so moral. If I step on your foot, I am sorry, but I need to get next to you. Yeah, you're, or your foot, if you're, your foot being meaning the Constitution. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. If I step on the Constitution, look, you know, what we're doing is so morally just, it doesn't matter yeah. that we stepped on the Constitution. It doesn't matter that we did things and that they believe out of procedure. Well, I think they do. Whereas, you know, I got to tell you, the other side of the political spectrum is is far more far more interested in in the means rather than you know what I mean I, yeah. like I, I I'm almost as mad at the right side of the political spectrum as I am the you know because you know I'm going gosh guys okay so we're almost in power again we you know they're almost I'm 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 not a Republican no, I know, I know. I'm not a Democrat I'm not a Republican but geez you guys are almost in power or you are in power you know let's do some stuff well. That's not how we op- – well, come on. Operate that way. You know what I mean? But this is the second time. And they go – and but what it is is that they're not as comfortable with the ends justifying the means. Right. They're just like, nah, we're going to – you know, we're going to be we're, a We're going to investigate. Gonna, yeah. We're going to investigate. And it goes well, – there's this – one of my favorite jokes. It's probably my favorite political joke is uh, if the Democrats introduced a law – introduced a bill to burn down the White House, yeah. the Republicans would ask him to phase it in over three years. <laughs> You know, and that that's kind of it's the, you know yeah that's that's yeah it's kind of the difference. I mean, look how long we've been dealing with this the border and the and, and illegal immigration. Look how long we've been dealing with this. We've been dealing with it so long that the Democrats have been on both sides of that issue. Exa- exactly. <laughs> that's it, so it's I mean, it, it's it's really ridiculous when you stop and think about it. But it's it's almost like the government is playing chess with the public. And each one makes a move, then one counters that move, and then counters this move, and then you know, but but nothing but, ever. But over gets, over time, yeah, they 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 kind of get what they want. Well, so the rest who of wears the, out, who wears who out. First. So the the rest of the story, though, is it, uh, Newsom's idea with with you know uh, trying to uh, go after plaintiffs mm-hmm. for legal fees if they lose was so ludicrous. First off, it was it was struck down. Uh, our attorneys, um, other attorneys, many attorneys who had Second Amendment cases going said, Judge, we need you to rule on this. Specifically, Judge Benitez, St. Saint, mm-hmm. Saint Benitez. Yeah. We need you to rule on this because we're right in the middle of this case and we yeah. don't know if you're about to bankrupt us or not. Yeah. And he said, okay, I'll rule on it. Ruled on it and said, yeah, this is ludicrous. <laughs> I mean, he <laughs> Those destroyed were his it. words. I can't remember if he said ludicrous specifically, but he was extremely hard on it. Yeah. Basically said that it was, you know, it was, it was really, it was. I, I, again, I can't remember his exact words. No but it was Christmas like, card is, from news. No. He, he, he basically he tore it up. So it was horrible. So bad. It's so bad that um, uh, the attorney general, Bonta, mm-hmm. he said, we're not going to defend this. We're done. We're not going to appeal. We're not going to defend this. Wow. And he's not exactly pro-gun. No, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. But, uh, and you think Newsom's okay with this? So Newsom, so, so what he is attempting to do is step in and, and prove that he has some kind of standing and then fund it with his own attorneys or fund use his own attorneys and fund it outside of taxpayers. Fund taking them from back the to attorneys. Court. So basically saying, all right, look, we're, we're not going to, uh, we're not going to use taxpayer money. We're going to use this other set of attorneys, not the attorney general. Right. And, and we're we'll going it you. from one of his 501 C threes or whatever. And we're, we're, we want to defend it. We want to appeal it. Wow. So the, he is we, angry. <laughs> so we got to wait and see. And he's even said, he even said, and I, I believe this. I think it's sincere. He said he was, he was glad that uh, Benitez, um, it, he kind of wins either way. We're, you know, yeah. he, because yeah. he said, look, I'm glad uh, the judge struck this down. That was exactly what we wanted. So now let's, let's appeal it. Let's get it back up to the Supreme Court. You know, we want this thing to be struck down. But so, what makes you think the Supreme Court's going to pass it? He's delusional, but his hope is that they they crush this and then go back to uh, the uh, the uh, in his mind. Right. If he wins at the, at the Supreme Court level, then he gets the screw over gun owners. Mm-hmm. That's right. good. Which is a feather in his cap for the if, presidency. If he loses in his mind, he tried. No, he he'll take that and try to go get rid of the abortion law in Texas. See what I mean? Uh, because he truly believes it's a cut and paste. It's a copy of the other law. It's not. Yeah. It is significantly right. and extremely different. Interesting. 
So that's that's why that's the stupid game that he's playing. That is amazing. <clears throat> Can you imagine him being president? No. No, I can't. That'd be scary. So when you say it's, it's like he's playing chess, you're exactly right. Yeah. I mean, he's four or five moves Yeah, ahead. he's about four or five, and he's not up against the smartest chess players. Mm-hmm. No, and I, I, or truly, I mean, he, he, I think it's it's proof positive with, with even Bonta saying, I, I'm not touching this. This yeah. is ridiculous. Well, the law is winning on this side. If the law states one thing, he doesn't want to acknowledge it, but Bonta's and the other lawyers do, then he's going to lose because he can't, he can't over. Yeah, well, I, I think I think eventually he's go, they're going to say no. This is an unconstitutional law to you know try to uh, you know uh, intimidate witnesses or not witnesses plaintiffs, uh, intimidate them yeah. out of you know filing lawsuits. That's not constitutional. And no, it has nothing to do with mm-hmm. the abortion law. It's significantly different. Yeah. And then he'll get to say, oh, they're a bunch of hypocrites. That's why you need to elect me president so I can get a new Supreme Court. <laughs> Goodness gracious. <laughs> One minute, cold chills. <laughs> yeah, I, I. By the way, I did make a a, a, a new reunion or a new uh, proclamation. That I'll never say one governor's worse than the other. Mm. Is when I thought Brown was bad. Yeah. <laughs> Little did I know. I would. I get it. I would. I would. I would love to have Brown back. Here I know. <laughs> Isn't that crazy that you're saying that? <laughs> Brown wasn't all that bad with guns. He was bad. No, not with but, guns, but he was just. He goes, hey, I didn't do too good last time, but I'll do good better next time. I don't even know. We'd have to go. How that far was his back? campaign? I mean, Schwarzenegger was horrible. Gray yeah, was. Gray, Gray Davis oh, was Gray horrible. Gray went to jail, or, um, or should have. I, I don't know. You know, Brown was. But what, there, what governor in in no. California history? Reagan. Who was the guy uh, what about Reagan? Oh, what was his name? Well, Reagan. That was pretty far back. Uh, before you're done. No, there's another dude. What's his name? Oh, oh I'll think about it. Has a weird name. It's kind of a Hey, Merry Christmas to all you folks out there. Hope you're having an absolutely wonderful day with your loved ones. We're having a blast ourselves. And did you know that Orange County Gun Owners is dedicated to preserving and restoring Orange County self defense rights? That's right. And if you live in Orange County and you want to help defend and restore the Second Amendment, you need to join ocgunowners.com slash join. Orange Orange County Gun Owners is more than supporting the lawsuits for the Second Amendment. They have developed an effective infrastructure that focuses on local outreach and activism. Volunteer at a shooting social, at a gun shop tabletop, and help uh, more pro-gun local officials get elected. Become a member today. Get involved. ocgunowners.com slash join. I think this is you're, you're, this is going to be the year of Orange County gun owners. I think you're right. We're, I absolutely think you're right. We have some big plans up there, and we're going to do some good things. And Heather is the right uh, right person for the job. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, I think you're going to we're going to see exponential growth up in Orange County. Yeah, um, I I, I think I think you're absolutely Duke Magian. Yeah. Oh yeah. There was somebody else though. That's I told not you it was a of, weird name. Yeah, yeah. It was. There's somebody else though. Who? Pete Wilson. Pete. Pete Wilson was good. Yeah, okay. I'll go with Petey. <clears throat> right? Okay, I'll go with Pete. He's I think he was he was even from San Diego, wasn't he? Uh, I think he was. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah he seemed to be all right. Yeah, all right. Maybe you're not so very good batting. I'd take average. Pete Wilson over it's not a very good batting average. <laughs> but no, I think I I'd, I'd take Pete Wilson over any California governor since Reagan. Wow. I'm not even sure Reagan was all was he a good governor? He's good in the movies. <laughs> and if you're in the movies, you know, you could be anything you want to be and be successful. Not like nobody didn't like him. He smiled a lot. He he was he was very he uh, asked him to take the wall down. Yeah. He did. He was very uh well spoken. He didn't get forceful on him. He didn't pull out a six shooter. No, no. And did you have you ever been to the Reagan uh library? Uh no. You, I've never it's up in like Santa Barbara, right? It's in San Dimas, I think. Which is close to that area. But anyway, you need to go. It's absolutely amazing. I've heard it's amazing. I've been to uh, the Nixon Library in Orange. See, I didn't go to that one. It's, it's pretty amazing. I had a chance. You want to hear something funny? What's that? So there's this, uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm doing this, you know, just this tour, right? Yeah. There's all kinds of cool stuff. You can listen to old recordings. Yeah, yeah. His house is there. Yeah. You know, they actually have his house there, and you can right. take a tour of his old house. Yeah. And it's this, you know, it's old. It's an old house. I mean- he was in office in the 60s, uh-huh. and he was like 50 then, right? right. So, I mean, he, you know, just give me an idea. I, I don't know exactly when he was born, but, you know, it's an old house. Right. 
So they then they had like a like a, a model of his house, like a dollhouse model okay. of his okay. house that someone had created, and they had you know little little doll sized furniture in there, right? And uh, you could you were kind of look down into it to see what his house looked like, right? right? So I'm sitting there, you know, looking at it. These two little old ladies were on the other side of it. They're like, "Oh my, this is so nice," you know. <laughs> and they were so they just thought it was amazing, you know. And one of them said, "You know." They said he was poor, but I don't think he was that poor. Look at all these fantastic antiques he had. <laughs> that is so funny. I just, I, I was like, uh, I'm not going to. Nah, nah, nah. Isn't that funny when you say, eh, nah, nah, it's not worth it. Because <laughs> this is going to be a long <laughs> That'll <drawn> be. <laughs> He'll be there a long time. But She uh, loved all his expensive antiques. Oh, my. That is so I wanted to hug her, really. Uh, <laughs> I know. You just got it. Have a. He's apple pie. <laughs> it's the best. But, uh, and know. then I'll tell you this. I actually went to the, this is, I went to the Nixon library and, and, uh, went to the Nixon library. What order was this? It was for a wedding. Yeah. Okay. Who so who gets married at the Dixon or the, the Nixon library? Yeah, apparently it's a real popular spot. Yeah. Are you so going to remember that? Nixon? We're in like, the, we're in the reception room. You know, we're or in the room where they had the reception. And my, my wife and I are sitting there like, gosh, this is like weird deja vu, you know? Couldn't figure it out. And uh, we're both like, well, we've never been here before, have we? No, we've never been here before. It's like, golly, what is this? You know, it just bugged us the whole time. Yeah. Finally, at the end, someone said, oh, well, this is actually a copy of, of a room in the White House. And she and I had just gone to D.C., and t- taking a tour of the White House. Did you really? So it was. It was. So that was, was the deja vu. It was. That was the deja vu. It was. You know, whatever room. I, f- I forget the name. It was like a, the gold curtains. Yeah. Right. Down to the paintings and everything. So we walked into this room and we're so like, it's what? just a replica right. of something in the White House. <laughs> right. One of the rooms in the White House. Wow. So anyway. Yeah. You know, it's it's so funny. I probably shouldn't even say this, but you know, this January sixth thing. Yeah. And you know somebody got busted for sitting in the the you know pelosi's place yeah well when i was in the army <laughs> i walked in and sat in the top chair you know of congress oh wow all right no one was there i figured this ought to be kind of cool i think i even got a picture taken so i could probably go to jail no well <laughs> little different circumstances i didn't have horns you know and people let's talk about that for a second not yeah. really you know so january 6th i i when we started San Diego County Gun Owners, I would get tons of requests. Hey, we should do a rally. We should do a march. We should do a demonstration. And I would, I would say, I don't want to do that. No. You know, I don't want to. either. And I'd get all kinds of attitude. You know, well, how are we going to get anything done? You don't even want to do that. Like, what good are we? Yeah. You know? And I finally, I asked somebody, I said, how one of the, per- one of the people that really wanted to organize a, a, a demonstration, a rally, a march, whatever. So how many people you think you could get to this demonstration, this rally, right? Oh, I, probably like a hundred. It's okay. Well, that's a miserable failure. <laughs> that's a total. That's a miserable failure. I said, what if we do this? I said, what if we have a press conference and we get a hundred people to show up at a press conference? How many people usually show up at a press conference? Well, I don't know, like a dozen. Yeah. Okay. So if we get a hundred people at a press conference, yeah. Number one, we control the narrative, and it looks better. It looks better. Because now we got a hundred people yeah. at a press. Number two, it, it gets beamed into everybody's house. Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean. Everybody, like, hey, press, we need you to be here. Well, because when you make that invite, and if if guns is anywhere connected to the conversation, they'll be there. They'll be there. Now I'm I'm right there with you. I have never ever been one for rallies or or any. There's a better way to get because once you do that, then the other side stops listening. They stop listening, and they get to describe right. the scenario. Yeah, they're telling us, "Look, they're out here. They're rioting because they think we're going to take their guns away, which we're really not going to do it." And, well, and yeah. and they, they did uh, listen. January sixth was was oh, it was horrible. totally wrong. It was it, yeah. I, told I mean, it, it because was, it got out of hand. Yes, and now who caused it to get out of hand? That might be another story to talk about down the road. That's a whole argument to have. But it got out of control. It got out of control. When's the last time you saw a press conference get out of control? No, you don't. You you get to you say, hey, look, this is what we're doing. Here's why we're doing it. That's right. Give it to them in advance. Man, you know. Let me see. Now the movie. 
shooter with Mark Wahlberg where they shot the, the <laughs> Cambodian. That one got it. That uh, press conference got a little out of hand. You're that right. one got a little bit okay, out of hand. Okay, other than the example from the movie sh- Shooter. Dude, I'm going to go home and watch that again tonight. <laughs> I've seen it like 30 times. So we, like Red Dawn for me. <laughs> so we did. We did a, our first. It was our first press conference. It was. Uh, and how many people did you have? We had 100 people there. Easy. We had every single station, station. including Telemundo. Yeah. Radio and TV. So that's uh, so we didn't do one during COVID, but about once a year. So what, what did what you guys say? Well, well, no. So we did it, and it was all successful. But you know, that's why you know we don't. January sixth is 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 the most extreme example of why we don't do demonstrations, exactly. and marches, because and, they get out of hand. They get out of hand. They the other any side gets to describe right. like, look, this right. is our impression of this right. thing. You don't get to set up the narrative. Right. You don't get to say this is what we're doing and why, and you can't control it. One of the most successful press conferences we did was a few years ago. Um, you know, every time the the gun show would come to town, there'd right. be some story in the paper saying, "Oh, so, so, you know, twelve year old uh, kids are going to go buy machine guns right. to rob stores with and walk right out, and you know, like all kinds of all kinds of lies." So we said, "All right, yeah, let's have a press conference. We'll let's have a press conference." We called it the ten thousand dollar gun show challenge, and we said, "Look." If if any of these things that they say you can do at a gun show, if you can prove that you did it, we'll we'll donate ten thousand dollars to you. You know, if you if you go I to a gun that. show, remember, I that? remember that? Yeah, that was you good. go to a gun show, walk in, buy a machine gun, and walk out. Walk out. If you do any of these things, and come show us, and right. we'll give you ten thousand dollars. We'll right. donate it to a cause, whatever. But we suggest you keep that ten thousand dollars for your legal fund because we're definitely going to turn you in for being. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. so be I ready, mean, Freddy. Yeah, you're definitely gonna. So you definitely have broken the law. You yeah. will get. You yeah. will get punished hard. Poking the bear. Now the funniest thing was KUSI showed up. And they're wonderful. They always show up. KUSI is just yeah. absolutely great. Yeah. Something something local's going on, and and you want the the, the straight. Uh, you know, uh, KUSI is the best. Mm-hmm. So they show up, set up their cameras, and they um they start uh they start uh, streaming over the internet. Um, before we start right so, so two I'm, minutes i'm standing up there okay it's 150 degrees out mm-hmm. okay i uh, uh we're about to go so i grab a towel and just kind of you know rub my face off right because i you know i'm kind of sweating i'm in a suit first comment on 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 kusi's website was uh, the gun guy's sweating bullets <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. I wish I could find that guy because oh, that's hilarious. That's a that's a T-shirt, man. I'm telling you. But we got a, we had a very successful uh, press conference. Now it doesn't mean we're always going to win, you know. But uh, but you get to say, you could like you said you could troll the narrative. Three quarters of the story was us telling everybody what's wrong, and then one quarter of the story was stupid comments from idiots that don't know what they're talking about in the audience. The, if usually the other way around, three quarters of the story are stupid idiots don't know what the heck they're talking about, saying stupid stuff, and then one quarter of it is our reaction. Right. Driving the narrative is far more important. Always way more. Far more important. So, um, but that that's why you know January sixth, it, it was a disaster. It was a PR disaster. It was a horrible idea. Mm-hmm. That's why we don't do that. And it was wrong on more just every way you could possibly look. Yeah. One yeah. minute. Yeah, I mean, it, I don't. It wasn't. They weren't trying to take over the government. It's yeah. ridiculous. Or what, what do they call it? A uh, insurrection. Yeah, it wasn't an insurrection. No. It's absolutely ludicrous. And and my proof of that is that no one has actually been arrested for an insurrection. No, no. you know. But the vandalism that happened and the the so, disrespect. But look to at the, the ca- vandalism in the twenties. I mean, in, in twenty twenty. Well, I'm not okay with that either. I, I mean, that, but that's definitely. I'm not gone. okay with any of it. But that's just gone by the wayside. It's okay. Sorry, your house is. Or your business is burnt well, that, to the ground. Well, that, Congress isn't talking about it because it didn't happen to Congress. Oh, that's right. I forgot. <laughs> I always get that messed up. Hey, folks, did you know San Diego Flight Training International is here in town? And they are a world-class training center if you want to go flying. Pilots can fly almost every single day, thanks to our weather. And they can fly out over the ocean. They can fly out over the deserts, the mountains. It's just a paradise. So that's why San Diego is one of the best places to learn how to fly in the world. Learn to fly in sunny San Diego right at Montgomery Field. Getting started is super easy. Give them a call at 858-569-1822. Or you can go to learn to fly with SDFTI. Or do like I would do is call 858-569-1822. That'd be a good Christmas present. 
He would you really get? Would you t- take flying lessons? Um, it's yeah. It's not. I, I took one lesson when I was a kid. And I really loved it. Yeah, it was like an intro. My parents got 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 it for me for my birthday. Uh, yeah. And my dad, my dad's a a, a pilot. He's really in. He, well, I mean, he's not. Know. You know. Well, yeah, I know. Sam, he's, he's a, a pilot. He's a pilot. I told you about my little flying experience. I drove by the airport that said Saturday free flying lessons. Oh wow! No, tell me again. So I went in and flew in a Cessna or whatever. Yeah, a little one fifty. We had to pull a little thing in the middle up. And when you did, the airplane stopped in midair. Oh, wow. Well, I mean, that's what they get. Because you you're just pulling the flaps down. Yeah. You know. So I went and took my lesson. And next Saturday, I pulled in and took another lesson. Third Saturday, pulled in and took another lesson. And he goes, excuse me, <laughs> have you signed up for, for flight school? He goes, no. I said, why? why? No, the sign says free flying lessons every Saturday. <laughs> and I've been coming every Saturday to get my lesson. It doesn't say you have to join anything, does yeah, it? Right. It's free flying. So they changed the sign. <laughs> but they, I, they meant like one lesson. Well, yeah, it was an inter- They forgot the word introductory. Uh, I guess. I don't know, but sometimes I get little literal and I just went in and had a blast, man. I was learning to fly. Didn't get a chance to land. I don't know. I don't know if I, I don't know. I know I won't jump out of an <laughs> that I can guarantee you. I don't know. So Maybe if I'm not going to jump out of it, do I really want to even go up in it? I might. I'm afraid I'd fall out of it. That's well, the there's that too. <laughs> Have you seen Mad, 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 Mad World? <laughs> not in a million years. Yeah. I every three four months I I do it just for therapy. Yeah. And when Milton Berle, you know, says, yeah. "Excuse me, the cars down below yeah. are going faster than we are," <laughs> and he was in an old Jenny. Can I go faster? Yeah, fifty dollars more. Pay me now. So I had to give him fifty. Yeah, but no, probably not. Anyway, maybe I'll do that next. Uh, what yeah. was your? Uh, it's Christmas, Dave. What was your? What's your favorite Christmas memory? What do you got? Oh gosh, what was your? When I don't know your well, fa- your favorite memory. To be honest, for whatever reason, doesn't have to be. Yeah, you know, my favorite Christmas. Um, what was the best Christmas you had? I usually work. Yeah. And I think doing this is my what it could be my very favorite. I had uh, Tanya in in one hour. I had Amber in. I got you. Yeah, I'm great. Now, and, and, and I love doing this because I know people out there like to hear live. Mm-hmm. I'm not a best of guy. I, I mean, I'll right. just go to some other channel. Right. I like hearing live. Right. And I'm with you. Yeah. So, what was yours? I think my fa- it sounds cliche, but it, it, it's really more of a coincidence. But it, when, I, when I was, it was when I was ten. Mm-hmm. I got I was living in Florida. I was living in North Florida, and uh, that was the year I got a, a Red Rider. And yeah, uh, I just remembered that I got mine when I was nine. Yeah, did they have to cut the stock off? No, no, they had to cut my stock off. Oh, it's bothered me ever since. They had to cut it off because why? You were a little guy. I was just too little. Yeah, and I couldn't. And I've. I sw- it got to the point where we used to have little BB gun wars yeah. in the neighborhood. Yeah. Oh yeah, I remember those. <laughs> you don't admit them. I remember. You don't admit them. <laughs> but it's not a lot of eye pro. All <laughs> out, all out war. It was a all different time. War. It was a wonderful time. I I don't know why. You still have it? No. Uh, uh, that. Yeah, I don't know why that that one. Uh, I got uh, I got a a Walter Payton jersey. Ooh. Yeah, I got a Walter Payton jersey because the uh, the Bears that was their undefeated season. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Oh, it wasn't undefeated. Uh, it was almost undefeated. The only one that, that beat them were the Miami Dolphins, um, but they won the Super Bowl, killed the Patriots, and I got this pirate ship that was probably like I don't know two feet long or foot and a half long. And you have had to little build pirates it? on it. No, well, you had to like you had to put the sails on and everything. Yeah. I don't know. It just that was such a. It was like the perfect age. Where the presents I got had meaning, mm-hmm. but I wasn't too old for Christmas yet. Gotcha. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they left a lasting impression in me. Yeah. And my See, my mom, I remember, you know, we woke up and my, you know, everybody was still at home. And my mom, uh, you know, uh, my mom always went overboard on Christmas. And she, of course, you know, everything was wrapped beautifully under the tree. My sister and my brother and my dad and everybody. And uh, she made a casserole and uh, went out and played with my new BB gun. And it was cold, but it wasn't too cold. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, it was yeah, like, yeah. Everything was just perfect. Yeah, it was, it was, you know, I know it's, 
Yeah, those are some. Those are the kinds of deal things you hang on to. That's yeah. that's true. No, I move. I think uh, when I moved to my dad got stationed in Hawaii when I was right before I was a freshman. I was I was a freshman in high school in Hawaii, and when we moved, it was like okay, everything goes. Yeah, you know Did what I mean. Did you not like Hawaii? I loved Hawaii for four years. You didn't loved have, it. You didn't have what they call rock fever. No, not even close. Not even close. I loved I every. Couldn't minute imagine of that life. either. I've been there a couple of times. I can't imagine that. You know, I uh, I don't know. I just really I like the lifestyle. It. They're not in any hurry. I I just loved everything about Rain it. Rain doesn't bother them. I I met a lot of. Uh, there were a fair amount of of military dependents. I was I was a military dependent. But there were a lot of other military dependents who like never left the base and they just were were constantly. They didn't explore. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Like we're in Hawaii. <laughs> this is yeah, great. Like, you know. God, you surf. Uh, I, <laughs> so I just started getting into surfing in. Florida. Yeah. And Florida. There's no waves. There's no waves. Yeah. They're puddles. But everybody was just starting. I remember uh one of there were like there were like the surfer guys. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. And one of them had read an article in a surf magazine and it was clearly written in like Hawaiian pigeon. So my eighth, right before I left, everybody started calling each other bra. You know, like like they did in Hawaii. Yeah. But they weren't pronouncing it right. right. It was really it was a bunch of little white kids. It was hilarious in hindsight. <laughs> Like anyway, so I went and surfed a couple times, and then I go out to Hawaii, and, and they were like, hey, six-foot waves, right? Yeah. Six-foot waves. Now, in Florida, that means the face of the wave is six, six feet. Yeah, right. In Hawaii, that means the back of the wave is six feet, That's so right. the front of the wave is 12. Right. So I went trucking out there and went, holy <laughs> I mean, at best in in Florida was like a three foot face. Yeah. I was like, "Wow, this is great," well, you yeah. know. And I went out there and I said, "I'm done. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not going to." So you didn't even try. Totally it. chickened out. Um, yeah. So I did a lot of. I did. You know, I did a lot of playing in the waves. I actually got to the point where I'd go out to the North Shore in the winter, and we'd we'd play in in twenty five foot face. Wow. That would there was shore break. Yeah. So I got really, really, really used to the ocean. I I never I ne never surfed again. No, nope. I went out there like I was something and That's left it. with my tail between my legs and never tried surfing. I I <laughs> I, I I yeah no I was I no, I I didn't do well with it either. No, 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 no. Even though I'm from California, we should we should try it, Dave. You and me. Nah, I'm done. It's not too late. It's never too nah, late. No, no, I'm done with it. Plus, when you drink half of it, you know that's always a. I can, <laughs> I can still taste that in the back of your mouth. I'm telling you, but no, it's. Of course, I had eight mothers and three fathers, so it was a little bit unstable, you know. Period. But I always tell everybody, if it wasn't for Boy Scouts of America, yep, and the church, God only knows. Yeah. And how far did you get in Boy Scouts? Uh, I got as far uh, star. Yeah. Didn't make it to Eagle. Yeah. Yeah. I had to fight tooth and nail even to stay in it because no, the parents didn't want to didn't want to support it at all. That's what I got to. Uh... I got to. I think I got. I was got about six months. I, I, I think there's star and then it's eagle, right? It's. I think it's star and then life and then eagle. Okay, so I got life. I just didn't get eagle. Yeah, yeah. That's, but I still have my. Uh, I still have my. Uh, no, my uh, my uh, my. I keep wanting to say costume. My uniform. I yeah. still have my Boy Scout. And your Mar You got your Mar Yeah, oh, yeah. Stash. Yeah, it's it's uh, somewhere. Somewhere. Yeah, it's like in a suitcase or something. Mine is too. Yeah, Cub Scouts. Boy Scouts, Explorer Scouts. I wonder how popular Boy Scouts is anymore. Uh, it's pretty popular, believe it or not. Really? Yeah, I've done a few groups that you know that do things like the Halloween. There's a big Halloween event that's put on by the Boy Scouts up in Escondido. Yeah, JBA Motorsports. I think. Well, his kids are all outgrown. I don't know whether he's still following through. We didn't do any, but it takes parental involvement. Oh to yeah, make it work. We didn't do any shooting. Um, we did archery. We did. I don't remember we, did doing we did shooting. We did scuba diving before scuba diving was scuba diving. The only <laughs> ones that did it was the Navy. What do you mean before scuba diving was scuba Well, before anybody would just kind of well, throw, we throw out a tank. And one dad was a, two minutes. One dad was a uh, underwater demolition team guy in Mar Mar Island Naval Shipyard. Hmm. So they brought us all over and showed you how to do it. Up. Yeah, That's with the big double hoses and you know, I'll never forget. One guy says, "Hey, do me a favor, turn that generator off. That thing's making it." <laughs> Hell of a lot of noise. I walk over and I turn it off. <laughs> this guy comes Kill out of the guy. water. This guy comes out of the water. I mean, clear to his waist. He had a hookah system on. Yeah. And that's how he was getting his air. Hey, Inland Empire gun owners strive to be the ounce of prevention 
to the fight for your gun rights. How do they do it? They do it by fundraising and getting local pro-gun candidates elected. You can become a member today. Get Go to iegunowners, iegunowners.com slash join and join the growing number of responsibly gun owners stepping up to defend the Second Amendment right. That's iegunowners.com slash join. Welcome to Gun Owners Radio. I'm Michael Schwartz. If you follow our YouTube channel, if you follow San Diego County Gun Owners YouTube channel or Inland Empire Gun Owners YouTube channel or Orange County Gun Owners YouTube channel, you want to make sure to subscribe to Gun Owners Radio's YouTube channel. We've decided that uh, most of the content is going to switch over to Gun Owners Radio um, so that all, all three can enjoy and we're all basically on the same page. So all you have to do is go to youtube.com slash gun owners radio and uh, follow us at gun owners radio and you'll be uh, you'll be up to up to you know up to up to snuff on everything. So go to youtube.com slash gun owners radio and uh, follow us on the YouTube channel. Cool. Oh, okay, so prize winner, gun owners radio prize package for joining the email newsletter. Uh, and if you want to, if you, if you haven't, please do gunownersradio.com slash subscribe gunownersradio.com slash subscribe S U B S C R I B E. And, uh, this week's winner is Christy. Christy. Is that turtle? Sure. It is. Yeah. <laughs> Christy turtle. Absolutely. T E R T E L Christy. Maybe it's Tertel. I was thinking that too. If she maybe it's like if she wants to get Christy, if you want to get really fancy, you yeah, should go a little t- exotic. Tertel. Yeah, for the new year. Yeah, like a little a little one of those little French uh, mm-hmm. you know Easy big fella. Comma things. <laughs> Easy big over fella. the E or whatever. I don't know. Oh yeah, what is that yeah. little little not a tilde. No. A Walda. A Walda? A tilde? I don't know what that is. Tertel. Okay. Hey, guess what, Christy? You won. Yeah. In what any case, she, you won. What she win? <laughs> Well, she wins a uh, Gun Owners Radio prize package, which Ow, is full cool. of uh, prize packages. It's, it's really what it is. It's a package of prizes from I Gun Owners wait. Radio. So I, it's, you know, uh, Rich actually always does a really good job. I would guess that now that we have some, some uh, swag. merch, some swag, swag. merch, yeah. uh, he might throw some that is a cool good, stuff in there. But that, that really reminds you of MAGA. That, right? So if you, want to, if you want to present that, folks, yeah, Gun Owners Radio hat, Fire Engine Red will be perfect. There you go. Because people look at you and they'll say, what do they mean by that? And if you're anything like me, you thought of five to ten people that you forgot to get a Christmas present for. Is one on the line? <laughs> no, no. But uh, what you want to do is uh, if you just, if you need to get a last-minute gift card, if you need to get a last-minute oh, Christmas yeah, yeah, gift, yeah. then uh, get a last-minute gift card at shop.gunownersradio.com. Where we have T-shirts, mugs, and hats. And who would turn down any of the merch? Nobody. Right. Not one person on the cool. planet. It's, it's very cool. cool. So shop.gunownersradio.com, or just go to San, or uh, excuse me, go to gunownersradio.com and you can follow the Sounds merchandise cool. there. Yeah. So we're doing something a little different. Usually we have uh, Sam the Gunman on at the, uh, in the last uh, last segment of the show, but we thought we'd bring him on at five o'clock, see what he's doing on this uh, Christmas Sunday. How you doing, man? Sam? Sam. Oh, nice job in there. <laughs> Rookie. <laughs> See if I give right, you Maybe a... not. <laughs> maybe you don't have Sam. I don't think we do. Where's Sam? He said he called in. I didn't. There he is. There he is. Can you hear me? I can, can hear, hear you now. now. How you doing, man? Okay. I am excellent. How are you guys? Fantastic. I know you don't celebrate Christmas, but Merry yeah. Christmas. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you. Likewise. Hey, how's the weather back there? Are you doing okay? It is a balmy 24 degrees Fahrenheit, um, which is, I think, like minus uh, minus six Celsius, yeah, minus seven. You getting any winds? Or are you? Are yeah, seven? we've got some wind here. Um, yeah. It was uh, it was even colder this morning. I got in my car. It was eight degrees. Wow. Do you have a plug in for your car? No, no. Oh. I drive a Volvo. It doesn't need that. Ah, very good. Well, it was uh, it was actually cooler than they they said it was going to be today. I, I it uh, the highest I saw was eighty one, which was I, know, I was sweltering. significantly oh, that's, that's chilly. That's freezing. It's significantly cooler than they claimed it was going to be. I complain. I bought another jacket for nothing. <laughs> Darn. 
Yeah. They were well, pretty proud. They were pretty proud that San Diego is the, uh, the warm, warmest. warmest place in the nation. Yeah. Or I don't know. Was it the entire nation? Do they yeah, count Hawaii? Yeah, they're still not coming. Who's, what do you mean? Who's, Anybody. Who's not coming? No one's coming to California. I don't care. We are the warmest spot in the nation. Well, maybe to visit, but not to live. Not to live, that's for sure. Unfortunately, yeah. I guess. I don't well, know. at least you got a nice, snowy, wintry day. <laughs> Well, uh, yeah, I guess, except that there's no snow. What? It's that cold and you got no snow? No snow. Oh, that's even Yeah, it, just because it's cold doesn't make it snow. You've got to have uh, moisture in the air. And, oh, not um, good. I'd be really yeah. upset. So, it's been a perfectly clear day. So how long have you been on Gun Owners Radio now? I've been on Gun Owners Radio, I want to say, since 2000, uh, probably 2019, maybe 2018. It's It's been quite a while now. Yeah, I think he's right. How do you feel about that? That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, I never expected it to last this long, honestly. I thought people would get bored of it, but um, it, it seems to be a popular enough segment, at least based on what you've told me. Oh, yeah, it's, it's very, very popular. People are actually, they, they've gotten bored of all the other segments, not yours. <laughs> no, no, seriously. <laughs> because we live in the community and we wear new merch that we're going to hook you up with, people actually know who, especially Michael and, and me, just because of TV, and no, we get comments all the time, and I got to tell you, they really what they can't understand is how you do what you do, and it's not just the the listeners, but it's guys like Mike and I. I mean, and it's very well. My my favorite story was remember what? a few years ago, Sam, when we took you to Front Sight, yeah, for the the charity shoot, yeah, yeah, and uh, we were walking around, and somebody recognized your voice. <laughs> There you go. No, I don't remember that. You don't remember? Somebody was like, hey, is that the, Sam, is that the Sam, gunman. the gunman? From the, I said, yeah. They, oh, I, I recognized his voice. Yeah. So, But no, it's, it's a very popular because it's almost the only thing educational <laughs> in two hours of radio. It's that, the only it, useful information really we give. Because you walk away saying, because well, if you pay attention, you learn something. And what's ironic is that even when you're wrong, you learn something. That, that's the part that blows me away. I just try to provide a useful service for the community, and if that means providing information, then that's that's what I'll do. Right, and if if I was your employer, I would be thrilled <laughs> because that's the kind of an employee you want, somebody that will take the time, you know, to do something like that. You, you ought to look at an AM radio station and do a trivia show. There was one here in San Diego, right here on KCBQ, that was off the charts. I mean, this guy, he'd keep you up all night. Well, don't, well I don't want to – you're, you're giving no, away our talent. talent. He'll always stay Dang. with us. You're, you're, I don't oh. want to talk him into going Excuse somewhere me. else. Are you paying him yet? I'll just do uh, <laughs> accolades. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, well, was, you Send know – Send him a hat. Let me ask you something. I've, I've, I've always kind of wondered this. I've never actually asked you. Do you – is there uh, throughout the week – so when this started, you know, your mom just said, hey, you know, this 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 would be a, a good idea for a segment. And, you know, talked about how, how great you were. And honestly, I was I was like, hey, this kid doesn't know anything. You were like 19. Did you time. really? Yeah. I was like, there's no way. He's like 19. I mean, how much could he possibly know? Every mom thinks their yeah. kid is, you is know. the best. And then, boom, he took off. Yeah, I know. But I've always wondered, Sam, um, is there are there times throughout the week, um, either at the beginning or still now, where you, you kind of, you got to go, oh, man, I, I got to read. Like, I got I to gotta just read stuff, you know, just in case. Just in that, case. Yeah. yeah. Do, you, do you actually, is it pressure? Um, no, I don't specifically study for this because, well, and I guess this gets to the reason why, uh, or part of the reason why the segment has been so successful. Um, I don't have some kind of special ability that others don't. I'm not some kind of genius, and I'll be the first to tell you that. What I do have is the uh, the knowledge of how to research, and that's really what um, – that comes from writing articles and now writing blog posts. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just – it's all about doing the research, and I just happen to be pretty good at uh, retaining the information. So let me ask you a question because when I was a kid, uh, my dad started me – in a wrecking yard at four years old, separating car parts. Okay, that's what I did every day till I went to school, and then I did it on the weekend. So I could ride with you in a car anywhere, and I and even this to this day, all I've got to do is see a portion of that car, 
And I can tell you the make and model pretty close you know, all the way up to into the 60s. So it's be, and it wasn't that I had a, any more of a talent. It's just that I'm, I, what I was into was what I was into. I loved cars, just like you love guns and firearm. You love the history of it. So anytime you can absorb some knowledge, it's almost, it's natural. So you don't, there is no stress when you come on this show because one, we're not going to rip you a new one if you lost because your win record is way higher than your loss record. But I think what you've done is the gift that you have, if there's a gift, is that you like sharing something you really enjoy. Well, and that um, that's a good point that, that you make. And it reminds me of a conversation I had uh, just relatively recently um, when I was doing some research for uh, a couple articles I'm, I'm working on currently, a couple magazine articles I'm working on currently. I was interviewing a gentleman by the name of Christopher R. Bartacci, who is pretty much the world's foremost expert on the AR platform. Like if there's anyone who knows more about the M16, AR-15, M4 family of, of weapon systems, um, it would be Jim Sullivan who helps design the thing or uh, Eugene Stoner who's dead and gone. So I guess he would be number three. And so I was, I was talking to him. Um, and he said offhand that this stuff is really important to him and that um, there's no point in knowing all this stuff if he doesn't share it. And I really like that attitude. And, um, of course, I'm, I'm nowhere near his level of expertise. But um, I, I think that it's a great attitude more people should have of, like, if, if you know something, if you have access to some kind of information, um, then it really is your prerogative to share it. It's important for the entire human race that you share mm -hmm. useful information with other people. Totally agree. Hey, you know, a lot of companies are so unhappy with their websites. You know, it looks old. It's out of date. It doesn't need to be freshened up. But it's just, and it's also not getting customers. Well, Sage Tree gets it. Since 2005, Sage Tree has been helping companies with websites that just look great, work great, and get leads. And that's what you want. So stop being frustrated by your website. And get one that does will make you proud. Contact Sage Tree today to get a website that makes the phone ring. Getting started is real easy. 866-728-9100. 866-728-9100. And they'll fix your website today. All right, we got Sam the Gunman on a little earlier today. And we were just sort of talking about how he comes about with all of this information. But, you know, if you're passionate about something, if you're golfer if you're into boats if you're into you know, hunting fishing you know if you do it long enough pretty soon you're truly i mean i'm not into dogs and i've been married to my wife for 22 years and i know more about dogs than you guys what because she breeds dogs well yeah and i'm involved in it we talk about it yeah. and, you know we you know i watch the just, sicknesses you just needed a little uh, a little more a little, a little clarity there just a little clarity People needed to know. She, yeah. she, she In professionally fact, I know, breeds dogs. I know more than I want to know. Let's put it <laughs> that way. And look, I bet you you know more about airplanes than Mike and I together because you fly, right? Um, yeah, but what, I, I guess I would stand to reason, yeah. But not the history, maybe, necessarily. He actually knows a lot about aviation. You know, you, you <laughs> used to, I remember when you were a kid, you, you used to read books on, like, on uh, astronomy and, and uh, I want to say even astrophysics, right? Um, yeah, a little, a little bit of light reading when I was younger. <laughs> hey, hey, do you, do you go to movies? Um, not really. I, I, I just, I don't watch a whole lot of movies and, uh, well, not the reason I asked, out. there's a new one coming out. Darn, my wife gave me the name of it, but it's a black pilot in the Korean war. I can't think of the name, but it's just coming out. It'll be out tomorrow. And I understand it's a true life story of this pilot kind of like the Tuskegee Airmen, but this was an individual guy that is pretty, they say, is amazing. I don't know if you'd heard anything about it. Uh, yeah, I, I, I heard about that. I don't remember the name, but I'll have to Devotion. To it. Devotion. Seems like an interesting story. It's called Devotion. Thank you, Mr. Bordop. Yeah, thanks, Todd. You just got your meatloaf sandwich back. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Devotion. So I'm really, really looking forward to that. That should be a good movie. So I got it. So are you still into like astrophysics and uh, astronomy and 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 whatnot, or is that a passing phase? No, yeah, I'm I'm still interested in it. Um, I I don't know nearly as much as I feel like I should. 
but um, it's it's really interesting stuff. I'm I'm sure a lot of your listening audience, given the area you're in, um, that at least some of them work in that professionally. All right, so I got a I got a trivia question for you. Okay. Uh, what what the the planet Uranus? Uh, stop giggling, Dave. I thought it was Uranus. <laughs> Either way. Okay. Uh, the the planet Uranus. What was it named before? George. How did you know that? George. It was named George. Who would name a planet George? The, 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 he named it after his king. It was actually King George, the same King George, oh. who uh, we had to uh, you know, give the middle finger to. And, and he- William Herschel. William Herschel, a fellow at, I believe he was a fellow at the Royal Society, um, discovered the planet we now call Uranus in, I want to say, 1784. And the king at the time, um, he, was, he was an Englishman, and the king of England at the time was George III. And this was the first time a new planet had ever been discovered since antiquity. Like this was the first recorded discovery of another planet. Um, All of them out to Saturn were known since at least the time of the the ancient Romans, probably earlier than that. Um, So this was, this had not been done before in recorded history. So he decided it to, he decided to name it after the most important thing he could think of, which was the King of England. So it was called George. So was this due go. to the development of telescopes, why they were able to find it? Um, yeah, telescopes were improving rapidly at the yeah. time, and people were uh, wealthy people were building observatories on their land. Yeah, going, hey, what's that, what's that out there? What's that bright thing? <laughs> so, all right, let's go back. So who were you interviewing, the AR expert? Um, I was interviewing Chris Bartacci. Chris Bartacci. And how did you, how did you come to interview uh, Mr. Bartacci? Um, well, it's it's through a really sort of complicated and, and convoluted set of circumstances. A lot of but ins, a lot of outs, a lot of what have yous. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, exactly. But so, it, But it happened. It happened, yeah. Uh, I, I had already known about him for several years by, by this point, but um, just the specific subject matter of a couple of pieces I'm working on right now, um, I was – pretty much completely stumped and at a loss for where to find more information. So I could, reached could you, out to could you him. Repeat that? <laughs> could you just repeat that one more time? I was, I was at a loss for information. Thank I you, could not which, find which is unusual. I just wanted to make sure I got it on tape. <laughs> I'm only kidding. So you reached out to him. I reached out to him. Um, we had a good email exchange, and he sent me seemingly almost – like out of the blue, his cell number. And I was, I was freaking out at this point. I was already not in the best state of mind because I was very stressed out by a combination of things. But um, I was, I was freaking out and decided, you know what, I'll have to call him eventually or else people will ask me why I didn't and why I just got stuck. So I did. And before I was even done introducing myself as the guy I'd been emailing, uh, the the guy who'd been emailing him, he immediately launched into an explanation of, in more detail than I could have asked for of exactly everything I needed to know. And we were on the phone for a good 40 minutes. Wow. Now, what makes – tell everybody, what, what, what is his background? Why is he the uh, – why is he such an expert on the AR, the AR platform or AR pattern rifle? Um, he has worked in a variety of different areas of the firearm industry, um, but where he is right now, just to um, like it, it would it would take a very long time to go through every single professional qualification he has. But suffice it to say, right now he's in semi-retirement, but travels around the world and is hired out as a consultant to help factories producing small arms get their production tooled up. Because he's he's like that insurance commercial. He knows a thing or two because he's seen a thing or two. Oh wow, perfect. That's awesome. So tell what was the uh, what are you writing? Are you, are you able to share what you're writing an article on? Uh, yeah, it's it's not uh, not some kind of top secret. I just don't want to get uh, expectations too high. Uh, one that I have that is almost ready for publication in Leatherneck. Is about the uh, the M9, the um, the Beretta, Beretta in U.S. military service. All right. Well, we'll hang on to the other one, and 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 it's good to make people wait. That's just yes. Yeah, you know, it's the whole purpose of doing it. 
Well, so, you know, if I if I tell people exactly what to expect, yeah. then they'll never stop asking for it. <laughs> exactly. I know. I'm right there with you. So, right have you? Uh, um, uh, this is going to get published in leather Leatherneck, though, right? It is. Yes. All right. Cool. Can the We're general public to. can the general public subscribe to Leatherneck, or does it have to be a Marine? Um, you don't have to be a Marine, but I think right now you have to, um, you, you buy the subscription as a membership in the Marine Corps Association. Um, and then the, uh, receiving the magazine is, um, one of the, one of the benefits you get as a member. Okay. Is so yes. Not, yeah, so, you can. Anybody can. Okay. I would think not that they wouldn't. I mean, yeah. We're probably, if he, it, uh, it, if, if Sam the Gunman is, uh, writing something that gets published, we'll probably... Throw it over on. Put our yeah. Make sure people can read it and promote. Plagiarize the, it a little bit. <laughs> we'll just steal it and just, not get him any credit. Yeah, that would give him any credit. <laughs> Joe now, Germisi wrote another good piece. <laughs> well, well, you well, you joke about that, but I have seen past pieces of mine show up on like sketchy free PDF download sites that I'm pretty what? sure are just run by robots crawling the web for PDFs that are public facing. Yeah. That's right. Well, we'll do it in such a manner that we'll actually we'll put credit your picture you. On it. Yeah, we'll put your picture on it, and we'll uh, we'll spell your name right, and we'll actually promote uh, Leatherneck. Hey, is there a better tool than empowering a woman to defend against an attacker's that's a hundred pound bigger? Well, that's why it's so important for women to learn how to defend themselves in the most effective self defense tool ever inv- invented. For women led by women, the Not Me program is designed to help with training, purchasing a gun, and getting a concealed carry permit. And guess what? It's free to go to sign up. Just go to notmesd.org. The program is also available in Orange County and Inland Empire. Get help today at notmesd.org. And if you go to notmesd.org, you can also buy their uh, – we have uh, Not Me merch now. We have uh, – Really? Yeah, we have uh, tank tops, hats, T-shirts, hoodies – all really? kinds of cool stuff. Yeah, not me merch. Okay. It looks like here. Let me show you a picture. Let me see a picture. Yeah, unplug yourself there. There you go. Oh, wow. It's good looking merch, right? I love the colors. The hat's really cool. Uh, yeah, that teal. You know, so you know why we picked teal? Yeah, why'd you pick? I, I know somebody that's involved in that. It's, well, it's, it, it's, it's not only Desi's favorite color. <laughs> it happens to be but we picked, Desi's favorite color. Yeah. But we actually picked I love teal it. because teal... Uh, when we had the press conference back in, I don't know, a couple years ago, it, like we waited to have the press conference for, it was... Um, I like her hat better than mine. It was, uh, it was uh, uh, Sexual Assault Victim Awareness Month. And I think teal is the color. Teal is the official color. Right, okay. So we actually got a bunch of, uh, like, you know, the ribbons? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, like yeah, red yeah. is like cancer or whatever. Right, right, right. right. So teal is uh, in honor of... Uh, Interesting. Victims I love the colors. So those will sell like hotcakes. I think so. So check it out. If you go to the website. So we got a bunch of stuff to give away now. Or just go to our website. Go to San Diego County Gun Owners. Go to the, the store. You can find it there. Go to orangecountygunowners.com. Inland Empire. Wherever you, you – if it's just like you get to this – it's all the same store. So get to the store. And just look for the label. Yeah, and you can you can buy all kinds of cool cool different stuff there. All right. We're talking to my nephew – Sam, the gunman, um, wealth of knowledge. Um, absolutely. I can tell you, I just want to tell you publicly, man, I'm extremely proud of the job you're doing. You're doing oh, a yeah. fantastic job. The articles you're writing, the segment you do for us, everything that you're doing in the gun world, I'm just extremely proud of you and uh, just absolutely think the world of you. I think you're doing a great job. Right. Hey, by the way, hey, you want some Volvo trivia? Volvo trivia? Yeah. All right. You ready? This is for Sam? This is for Sam. Is it a question? Yeah, it's not for you. It's a Volvo question? You don't even know what a Volvo right, is. All right, go ahead. Sam, you ready? Sure, let's have it. What does Volvo stand for? The word. Um, the word. It uh, comes from the Latin word for to roll because they were originally a ball bearing factory. <laughs> you should see. I have, he, he's, so, Dave's mouthing words that you can't oh, say on the radio. Can't. Well, <laughs> You're absolutely one thousand percent correct, and you're on, you're one of the only very few outside of factory personnel that I, I go out with occasionally. They would know that, but you can't stump him. I'm telling you, there's no we didn't prepare him for no, that. I know, I know. Is that crazy? Hey, what's the ingredients of Socceroo <laughs> Italian sauce from 
uh, Paul Newman who donates. What all about the here's a, here's a what about uh, what's the yeah, uh, with the logo? Here's another uh, 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 car one. What's the logo? Mitsubishi's logo. Yeah. What is that? What does that represent? How did that come? What's it representing the logo? Uh, I believe it's a propeller because they were an aircraft company. Bingo. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, absolutely. They made uh, Volvo's logo. Uh, their badge is the alchemical symbol for uh, the planet Mars and for the element iron because. As I said, they were a ball bearing factory, yeah. so iron works. Exactly. So, what what uh, year and model do you have, Volvo? I have a 2004 Volvo S80 that I love very much, even oh, though yeah. it's from the model year range when Volvos kind of started to not be so good. Yeah, but if they, if you take care of them, they'll, they'll run. Mine's a, I, I I look at it every Friday when I go out and collect my checks, but it's a 1978 uh, P1 P1800 ES wagon. Oh, you have got to be kidding. The P1800 is uh, a gorgeous car. Uh, don't even get me started on that car. I literally, I drive by, and it's in this little vintage shop, and it's for sale, and I just don't have the nerve to walk over there. I first seen it at the San Francisco International Auto Show, and I walked up on that car, and I literally fainted. It was so beautiful. But You know, you know that's that's the uh, the longest running car, the car with the most miles on it right. at something like 3.2 million yeah. plus is a P1800. I know. I know. I love, you know what we're talking about? Yeah, vaguely. I mean, I can't, it's I couldn't a, picture it. It's a it, station but, wagon. Yeah, I can, I, I can picture like a, and, what, what is it like, a lot of them were that, they had like this very distinctive tan yeah. color. Yeah. I, this was kind of a goldish color on this one. And this is a car with a long nose and a long tail. Very car And a handle was actually in the glass. It was not uh, exterior. Uh, it's just a beautiful Like they car. pick it up? But, okay. Yeah, to <laughs> unlatch it and oh. open up the rear, the rear hatch. That makes more sense. Well, that's, God, I can't believe that, Sam. No, I'm, I'm glad you like it. There it is. How many miles have you got on that thing? Uh, mine is right at 120,000 right now. So I've got about another hundred and twenty thousand before the transmission falls out. It's an American built transmission. Yeah. No good. yeah, yeah, yeah. The trannies are the first to go on those. The motor will stay together. But you could get yeah. three hundred if you play it right. So yeah, nice. All right. So let's talk right. about your article. Oh yeah, back um, to work. Yeah. Straying from uh from cars for just a second. Um <laughs> your uh, latest ar- article behind the counter. Buy once, cry once, right? Right. Talk to us about that. What does that mean? First off, is are, are you, it looks like you're kind of doing a uh, a series, the behind the counter series. Is that? Are you? Gonna I like have, that yeah. title. Yeah. I like that title. Yeah. So, um, my I, I like to to keep a, a a mix of different blog post types of topics. So not all political, and not all industry, and not all hardware. Mm-hmm. And so behind the behind the gun counter is when I share. Just so, like I'm not pretending to be some kind of master of the craft, but I, I think there are lots of different um, tips and, and pieces of good info I've picked up from working at a gun store mm-hmm. that uh, I find that a lot of customers don't generally know. And so I figure it, it might be worth sharing. And uh, the, the buy once, cry once piece that, that I just wrote is, well, for those of you who haven't read it, you should go read it. It's, it's, I think it's fun reading. But it's about um, basically my point is do not cheap out and buy the absolute bottom of the barrel stuff because you'll regret it. Every time. I was just talking. We were just talking about that, weren't we? We were just talking about uh, I was actually I started talking about watches and uh, I'm I'm right on the the cusp. I told you to go see my buddy. No, I want to I I just want to get what I want, though. I was offered I was offered almost what I wanted. And I thought, man, this is almost what I want. I, and it's a really good deal. I should do it. And I thought, no, nope, not going to do it. But and if you go see him, he might have what you want. It might. I, I got a, I, I'm, I'm a little chicken. But then it, we started talking about guns. Oh, you're headed. And what was the, what was the gun? You who, you ta- who were you talking to? Wasn't it? So, yeah. So we started talking about a Springfield XD. Someone said, hey, why don't you just get a Springfield XD? But you're, you're, you're the one, the gun you want is a, he wants a Glock 19. So he's like, no. Nope. And I, it's, that kicked off a whole conversation before. Get what you want. You're never going to be right. satisfied otherwise. Right. So you're talking, is that kind of what you're talking about, Sam? People that walk in and go, eh, it's not what I want, but here's what I can afford. So they buy it and they're never happy. Yeah, I'm talking about uh, two very closely related things. Um, that situation of someone settling for less than what they want. And for people um, just absolutely cheaping out because they they think that 
a, a defensive tool is a, is a good place to save a few bucks. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's my now I'm not trying to be an elitist. I know there are lots of elitists in the gun community, uh, many of whom are unfortunately not aware of it. But um, what I'm, I'm saying is pretty much don't buy the cheapest bottom of the barrel stuff because they generally skimp on quality control and, and durability. Um, but you don't have to buy the absolute top end five thousand dollar Cabot 1911 because the juice isn't worth the squeeze at that point. Just do your research. Right. I used to have this strict rush. Still do. Don't don't buy anything with a with a skull on it. What does that mean? If, if it's if they have a skull on it, there was this time in the in the early two thousands where uh, uh, I mean, you name it, like stocks, pistol grips. Uh, you know, yeah. furniture, everything. They were putting skulls on everything, and if it don't, don't, if it's got a skull on it, don't buy it. You know, it's it's cheap, it's junk. Like that was a surefire way. Do you, do you follow that analogy, Sam? Um, yes, I do. Uh, I think the Punisher skull thing is stupid, and I groan every time someone buys a Punisher skull Glock backplate. Oh, oh yeah. Or they put it in the grill of their Jeep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh well, good. Movie, so, uh, what? What? Give me. What's an example? What? What's an example? Here's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for an example of uh, almost the opposite of what you just suggest. Is there something out there that people like? Yeah, you probably don't need that. You could probably get away with this. Is there? Is there? Is there an example of that? Something that's just as good but not overpriced. Yeah, and and that's a really good question. Um, sort of asking me to disprove my own point a little bit. <laughs> well, yeah, but. Um, you know. With uh, with practice ammo for your pistol. Now, if you're a precision rifle shooter, of course, disregard everything I'm about to say. But you already know that because you've already gone deep down that rabbit hole and you know what you're doing already. But for most people, if you are if you are just buying ammunition to practice with whatever handgun you have, and you don't care about match grade accuracy, you just need to put down rounds downrange to get that proficiency you do not need to buy expensive ammo as long as it's as as long as it's reliable that is really all you need there's there's almost no benefit to be had by buying for you know for for your Glock 19 that you carry every day there is very little benefit to buying black hills to shoot at 10 yards versus you know whatever seal cased crap to shoot at 10 yards i think as that's a great as, example as long as it runs fine and it it it's reliable and it doesn't damage the parts of the firearm. One minute. Then it's good enough. That is an excellent example. I like that a lot. Now your article can be found by going to any of the San Diego County Gun Owners dot com, Orange County Gun Owners dot com, Inland Empire Gun Owners dot com. Go to the blog section. Uh, you and Joe both have uh, articles that are there. Um, both are excellent and uh, appreciate it. We're also uh, I th- I don't think we sent it out Thursday, but we'll probably send it out this thursday because uh we were uh last thursday's email had to do with uh you know christmas and yeah and all that what stuff. not the party yeah so we'll uh we'll we'll send out the the blog uh but that's awesome you did a great job appreciate it sam and in next segment we're gonna actually do our, our we got a good question for you hey a self-defense event happens in seconds and in the time it takes to listen to this commercially your life could change forever I pray you're never forced to shoot in self-defense, but if you must, then you must be ready. That's why USCCA exists, because every responsibly armed American should have the training and education to navigate a self-defense situation. And should you ever need it, the 24-7 critical response team is right there for you. To discover more about the USCCA, visit uscca.com slash D-O-R. Act now, because the life you save could be your own. Remember, uscca.com slash G-O-R. All right, we're talking to Sam the Gunman. It's been a fantastic interview, man. You yeah. Did a great job. You could do six. But now you uh now you gotta now you gotta do what you're what you, where you make the big money here, which is uh our everybody's favorite segment. Uh Stump My Nephew found out years ago, as we talked about earlier in the show, that Sam, my nephew, is fantastic when it comes to gun trivia. So um if you send us a question. And we read it on the air. We'll send you a hat or a shirt. If you stump my nephew, you will also get a special prize, which I don't know what the special prize is this, this week, but we'll definitely make sure it's special. So, um, Sam, you ready for the uh, question? Sure. 
All right, bud. This one comes from Gordon, who lives in a place called Reno. Gordon wants to know, what is a Liberator pistol? Gordon from Reno. Thanks very much for writing in. I'm sorry that you live in Reno, but, well, that's neither here nor there. Um, well, it is there. Anyway, the Liberator pistol was a was an extremely low-cost defensive weapon devised by um, the Allies during World War II with the intent that it would be mass-produced for very low cost and airdropped en masse to civilians in occupied uh, Europe under under Nazi occupation. And the idea was you have a gun that's just good enough to shoot, and you can use that to maybe assassinate a German guard and take whatever he has and uh, thereby mount a resistance. Uh, they were not deployed in large quantities. Most of them were dumped into the English Channel because someone realized, wait a minute, if we drop a bunch of guns to people in this area we're about to liberate, then they might use those guns against us when we come through. So uh, they weren't really used. Designed to be airdropped to resistance fighters in World War II, a million Liberator pistols were mass-produced from sheet metal for only $1.72 per unit over the course of just four weeks. The disposable pistols didn't have the rifling grooves in the barrel that usually served to keep the bullet's trajectory straight, so they only had a range of about 7.5 meters, 25 feet. They were designed to be a temporary weapon that resistance fighters could use to kill Japanese or German soldiers until they could scavenge a better gun. So you win again. You nailed it. You nailed it. That, that's, uh, that's a couple of your hobbies there. That's uh, guns and history, both. You ever seen sure. one? You ever seen one? Um, yeah, I've seen a couple of uh, I, a couple of what I think were originals at um, gun shows here and there. And a few years back, some company made some reproductions of them, mm -hmm. uh, capable of firing. Though I'm not sure I would trust one for prolonged use. Maybe fire a couple of shots and stick it in a display case. Well, just one time, just to say you shot. Just shoot a German guard and then call it a day. Guess, but they're hard to find. <laughs> no, they're all good. Those they're, guys with the fuzzy hats in England, no, do those no. count? No. Oh. Those are the, it's the exact opposite. Oh, man. So, uh, awesome job. Fantastic. So, let me ask you something. We're going into 2023. Um, I don't think a lot of people know this, but I actually send messages to Sam from time to time. He's uh, a, a really knowledgeable. He's, he's uh, not just on trivia stuff, but... You know, I'll ask him his opinion. You know, what do you think of this person? What do you think of this guy? What do you think of this message? What do you think of this whatever? And he's uh he's he's right on point, man. He knows exactly he knows his stuff and he's he's uh very good judgment. So what what do you think gun activists should focus on in twenty twenty three? You're asking me to make a New Year's resolution. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> if, there you go. If gun owners uh gun if gun activists, what should be their, their New Year's resolution? Well, um, I'll have to disappoint you by not coming up with a new thing. Of course, I, I don't. Uh, this is very off the cuff, but I'll just repeat what I've been saying to anyone who will will pay me any attention for years, and that is outreach. Um, well, we all enjoy looking at uh, looking at memes saying, uh, you know, oh, ha ha, look how stupid these anti gunners are. The truth of the matter is that that appeals to us people who are already on our side, yep. and it alienates everyone else. What we really need to focus on, and I'm talking to every single one of you listening right now, is outreach. If you have a friend who is maybe anti-gun or even just doesn't know anything about firearms and was never raised with them, um, offer, hey, do you want to come shoot with me? Uh, provided, of course, you have the knowledge and experience to, to do so safely and to instruct another person. Get more people into the hobby because it really is a cultural thing. The more people understand it, the more willing they are to to see the reasons why, you know, okay, this is why we think we should be allowed to own guns for self-protection and so on and so forth. I think that's excellent advice. And for everybody listening out there and you're not sure what a good step to take is, you know, you want to you follow Sam's advice and you're not sure how, Go to our website, go to the volunteer section, and help us with these shooting socials. That's exactly what we're doing with these shooting socials is that we're finding people that are either, you know, brand new to guns or they just haven't shot one since they were kids, something like that, and they're trying to get a, uh, a taste for it again. 
Uh, we need folks that can just show them how to shoot. We'll train you. We'll show you how to shoot. We'll show you how to show them. Um, but I think it's a great uh, New Year's resolution for activists. Um, that's a fantastic job, Sam. Thank you for spending so much time with us. I, I, I'm glad the audience got to get to know you a little bit better. And, uh, you know, we're here uh, on New Year's Day next week, too. So maybe you can yeah. call in next week and we'll, we'll throw, same some, thing. throw some more stuff around. Sound good? Yeah, I'd love to. As always, thanks very much for having me on. Thank you so much, everyone, for listening. Uh, read the blog posts and comment on them. All right. Very good. By, a, by the way, I want the red hat. You want the red Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll trade you. you afterwards. You don't have to trade me. I'll just give it to you. I just love it. I mean, it's I good, like right? the font. I like the font. The, the two-tone's really nice, too. But it, I like the solid red and the sure. white lettering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll give it to you. Hey, by the way, folks, you know, you can listen to us. Uh, we'd like you to actually go give us a five-star review that you can find on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify. And if you ever have an opportunity, join San Diego County Gun Owners, Orange County Gun Owners, Inland Empire Gun Owners, the Dillon Law Group, Sage Street, San Diego Flight Training International. Don't make it so small my head won't fit in there. <laughs> I know if I put that on. There you go. I know if I put that on, it'll go way down over my ears. <laughs> Your head's bigger than mine. There, right, look. I know. You got that. I know. I love it. Hey, man, I just want to thank you. This has always been a fun show. It's always a fun show. Yeah. And uh, thank you, Super Dave, for all that you do. This, I hope you have a very this audio nice. guy. Hey, I, I thought I he was. I thought I he belonged know. to you. No, I thought he belonged to you. <laughs> Shows up every week. No one's even told me his name. I don't think he works here. I don't think he does either. <laughs> well, at least we know the check's not bouncing. Well, he wants to get a gun. I know that. Is that what he wants to do? Yeah, he wants to get a gun. But everybody 19. wants to tell him to get something that he doesn't want. Well. Yeah, well, that's easy to roll. Wait and get a Glock 19. Hey, by the way, hats off to Todd inside. He was able to keep the wheels on the wagon for five, six hours. It was nice. my pleasure. Yeah, we have, but we always have fun when we get together anyway. Hey, what's 1904 stand for? 1904? Is that it? What's 1904? 1904, I don't know. Okay, 19 is letter s okay and o4 is the letter d so san diego oh well you know how they were doing you know your zip code and they were doing your phone prefix well yeah. 1904 is the new i didn't and he, and he has, has a bicycle club really yeah okay so what is he like for like t-shirts and stuff or? yeah t-shirts hats he won't ever so if get, you he see won't it. give me one i gave him a meatloaf sandwich <laughs> i don't get a hat so if i if you see 1904 on like a bumper sticker then it means san diego it means sd san diego yeah that means well i didn't know and that. if it's a shirt and a hat it's probably his bicycle group because there are other other groups using sd or using 1904 do you know no we're the only bicycle club that is using it but if somebody else is using 1904 there might be one in south dakota maybe that's using it Oh yeah, South Dakota. <laughs> Never thought of that. No, I'm just it's it's cool, but usually when you do like a code like that, it shortens it. And it's I know. It, no, his 1904 is doubles it. Yeah, it's actually well, he, came to, he came to KUS. I, you know, what what you see here is nothing. When you see get him behind a camera, yeah. Totally different person, man. It's just like, wow, I couldn't believe it. No. Actually, I was just trying to, you know, you set such a good example. I was <laughs> to Well, what kind of bikes are you talking? It's a, a stretch custom cruisers and oh, low rider pedals. Nice. Pedals. Get a nine foot bike. Was, that, was that a KUSI? No, no, I didn't bring it out. It's it's kind of hard to transport. You think nine feet long? That's that's like the, the my it's like the size of my Jeep. Are you getting an electric bicycle? No. Somebody told me was it you that said you were uh, thinking about? No, it? I'm making an electric bike. Yeah. No. Think about it. No. No. Yeah, yeah, that's not. Uh, that's mm. not. Uh, no. Hey, well, one other year under the belt, my friend. That was a that was a good year. I and I, I everything went really really well. I was going to be better next it was an interesting year because it was it was we weren't quite sure if covid was in the rearview mirror or not yeah. do so, we still know why well, it's it's believe me it's well in my rearview mirror oh it's, so uh, it, was, it was always in my but we uh you know we had uh two minutes we had a, a successful dinner we had a, a successful christmas party in the empire had a successful dinner Orange County had a successful dinner. We had two gun um, proms. We had that's that's what I'm talking about. The the dinners. That's what I the, said. We uh, had two gun proms. The uh, and then we got a lot coming up, man. The, we're gonna there, you're gonna see, um, you know, we got a lot of people elected this year. It was an election year, which is great. Um, but next we're gonna start working on uh, policy stuff. You know, uh, you know, CCWs are, are can you get one quickly and and cheaply? Uh, you know that kind of stuff. And we can't stop. We can't stop. We have Not to keep close. Moving. Yeah, we got to keep moving. You know, even though, you know, 22 is okay, 23 hopefully is going to be better. But you just, so which means you have to recruit your friends and family. 
you know, if you're in the gun industry and you love it, you need to be somebody that goes out there and shares with the community. And if you don't want to do the hard work, one minute, send them to San Diego County gun owners. There They'll go. do it. They'll do all the work for $10 oh, a month. That's right. If you can't dime your time and they know how to take money out of your credit card without you even knowing as long as you <laughs> give them permission. That's right. I give every month. I don't even but if, feel if, it. If you don't have, if you don't have the time, then give us the dime. There you go. But and, it's, and it's you'll one make, or the other. Or and you'll make it worthwhile. That's right. Thank right. you, Dave, for everything you do, buddy. See you next I, weekend. I, I'm looking forward to our New Year's. Uh, I know. Me too. Fun. You thought this one was great. You just wait. Hey, Siegel just got one in the can. Wouldn't yet.